Hi guys, Neil here from neilcreators.me and this is another logo tutorial. This time we're making the Snow Pursuits logo using Inkscape, which is a vector graphics program, which is comparable to Illustrator by Adobe, but this is free. Just download it from the website. So I'm going to start off by writing the word snow and I'm going to use the agency font. This is a different font to what's using the actual logo, but it's close enough. I'll modify it so it's going to look close enough. So first off, I'm going to make it bold so it's thick letters. And then with the text tool selected, I'm going to use these options at the top to move the individual letters of the word closer together. And I'm going to stretch and squash it down a bit just so it's more comparable to the actual logo, which you can see on snowpursuits.co.uk. So just going to move those letters slightly closer together. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We'll use this as it is. So selecting it and then left mouse clicking on the colors, I can change the color of this text. And I've made the, the um, stroke path, the perimeter, the outside of the letters transparent so it hasn't got a, a line around it. And now I'm going to divide the snow into two sections. And I'm going to use this ellipse tool, this ellipse shape to divide this snow up into two sections. So I'll just make this ellipse transparent just so we can see it through. And that's why I made it red as well so it stands out. So I'm going to move this ellipse tool so it's round about halfway, maybe a bit lower than halfway. Then with the ellipse selected, and then I click and select the snow as well, and I go through to path and then division, and it splits up the word snow into different sections. It's actually split all the letters up as well, so I'm going to select all the top parts of this word snow and group them all together. And then you see now when I click on a color, the whole top section is colored and it's been divided along that ellipse that we had before. So I'm going to make that top a lighter gray. And actually I'm going to put a, a blend on it from the lighter gray into transparent by default. So I'm going to move the opacity up to 100% and make it white. So it goes from light gray to white. And I'm going to move the nodes on this blend line around. I'm not going to make them perfectly vertical because I want the left side to be slightly darker than, than the right side. So it's just trial and error till you get it how you want it. It's pretty close and that'll do. So that's that done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all the bottom parts of the letter and group them together. And then I'm going to Click the bottom section and the top section and duplicate that. So we've got another word snow and I'm going to change this color to dark gray, which it is. And I'm going to use this to draw an outline to our letters. So I'm going to make the middle invisible, make the fill nothing, and then make the outside black or dark gray. So now we have an outline to our letters and that'll do. So I'm going to write the second word, pursuits. I'm going to change the font size to a bit smaller because it's too big. I'm going to make it bold again so the letters are thicker. And I've spelled it wrong, so I'll just spell it right. TS on the end. And move that across. So I'm going to shrink this as well. And just test it out for size. And that looks good. I'll just move the letters a little bit closer together actually and then stretch it out a bit all right and we'll start modifying the colors of this so make it a bluey color sort of a light blue color okay and then again i want to blend this from light blue from the blue to a white color So let's drag the nodes up, and this time I do want a perfect blend. So this is a perfectly straight up and down vertical. Because the top one I'm gonna top node I'm gonna change to 100% opacity and white because by default it's 100% transparent. I'm gonna give it a dark grey outline, and that's our letters looking okay. So next I'm just gonna put a bit of a drop shadow behind these words. So I've selected the word snow, duplicated it with Control D, and then I've made it black. Just change the blur to 2%. And 
I'm going to move it right a couple of pixels and down a couple of pixels and then going to move the black layer to the bottom. Do the same with pursuits, duplicate it, make the duplicate black, blur it by two, move it right and down a couple of pixels and then move that to the bottom. And that's a quick way of doing a drop shadow. And I think the size of these words are still a bit tall, so I'm going to select all of the snow parts and shrink that a bit, squash that a bit, and I'll, I'll do the same with the pursuit, squash that a bit. Okay. And I think that's better. That's closer to the logo that's on the website. So now we're ready to draw the mountain shape that's in the background. So just click on the polygon shape tool and put the number of corners to three, and then that draws a triangle. And then you just move the triangle across centrally and just squash it down and modify its nodes so you're happy with its general size, which I am there. So I've made the fill invisible and the outline a thick dark black. I'm just going to shrink that a bit more to get it. I'm just comparing this to what the logo looks like on the live site. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to fill it with black. I'm going to duplicate it again, fill it with white. And then I'm going to move the white layer behind the black layer. And I'm going to use the pass tool to draw a shape and I'm going to use it as a cutter. And hold down shift and drag out from one of these nodes, it, it creates an an arm that you can move up and down and it modifies the curve that you've got in this bottom section here. So I'm just doing this trial and error till I get a curve at the bottom how I want it. It's going to represent the bottom of the snow cap that's on the mountain. Okay, it's getting close, so that's good enough. So I'm going to use that, select that new shape and then the black mountain and go division and divide it and I'll delete the top section and now I've got the mountain. So to select both of them, group them together. And there we go, there's our mountain done quite quick. Move that to the back and it looks pretty nice. I'm just going to shrink it a little bit more and group all those sections together. The logo is done. Shrink it down so we've got it in the middle of this page. Although well, it's not necessary, but just just for now, and zoom in. And you can see because it's a vector drawing, you can zoom in or out as much as possible, and it's always going to have a sharp edge, so it doesn't blur like pixel format. So I'm just going to save that, export that as a bitmap, but then save it as a PNG, so we'll have a transparent background when we use it on a website. Call it SP Inkscape logo. Save it to my desktop. I'm going to set the resolution to high so it's going to be a nice sharp image and export it. And there we go, that's done. Shut that down, minimize that. And there it is on the desktop. Let's double click it, open it up, make it big, and you see how sharp that is. It's a really high resolution image, which is great. And I'll open up the internet and we can have a look at the Snow Pursuit site and we can compare a new logo that we just created against the original logo that's live on the website now. So let's open up that logo that we've just done. See the font's different, but the logo itself is very similar. And this is a very simple but good tutorial that's shown you a few techniques for creating a nice looking logo. So go on, go ahead yourself and play around with Inkscape. As always, head over to neilcurtis.me where you'll find lots more guides and tutorials, not just about graphics, but also about web design in general. And I can show you how to make websites from the very start to the very finish.